Hello and uh, welcome to today's video tutorial. In today's session I'm going to teach you how to build a login screen that redirects users based on their user role in the table. So for example if your application requires an admin level, a manager level, and some kind of a low employee level, you can actually create a single sign-on and based on their credentials we can redirect that user role to a different set of navigation links. Notice that on my login screen we are hiding the navigation menu from each one of our user roles. That is the benefit of creating a redirect based on a single sign-on. Another benefit to doing it this way is that all of the user roles will be logging in from the same URL. Let me give you a live example of this functionality so that you can see it before we start building it inside our Caspio account. All right, so I know that this current demo that I'm showing you has three different levels of users. I have admin, managers, and staff. Let's log in as Kelly first, and Kelly is the admin of my application. So when I log in as Kelly, you're going to be able to see this navigation menu across the top. Notice how it was hidden on the login screen, and only until I logged in was I able to see this navigation menu. Now let's go ahead and log, on as the, log out as the admin, and let's log in as John, and John in this application is a manager user role. So when I log in as John, you're going to be able to see a more compressed navigation menu. So we're limited to less navigation links because John, unlike Kelly, doesn't have all the privileges as the admin because my manager role only has so much capability inside the application. Now let me log out as John and let's log in as Tom who in this application demo is staff level employee. So as soon as I log in you're going to be able to see a very limited navigation menu because unlike Kelly and John Tom only has certain rights in the application to perform a couple of things in terms of the workflow. Okay. So once again, the benefit of doing it this way is notice that on the login screen we're hiding the navigation menus and only until you've logged in you can actually see the application data pages and all of the functionality. And the second benefit is that you're logging in from the same URL for each one of the user groups. You can also go to our knowledge base, howto.caspio.com and if you search for user-specific redirect you're going to be able to find a written tutorial that explains how to set this up. And just by looking at this illustration, you can get the idea on what's happening here. Based on my credentials from the Caspio table, if I'm an admin level, manager, or an employee, I am redirected to that specific set of URL navigation menu links, or specific portal, if you will. Okay, so let's go to our Caspio account, and let me show you how to create this. I have a sample application container called user redirect demo. I'm going to open this and I'm going to go directly to my tables object. And just to speed up on time, I have already created my table. I'm going to show you all of my fields first. And in my table, these are the most important fields that you need to have if you wish to set this up for your application. Number one, we need to have a user ID because that's how each user is going to be identified. Okay, that's going to be a unique value, always. We need to have the names of our employees, and we of course need to have an email and password field. In my example, you can see that the email is unique because it needs to be a different email for each specific employee. We can't have the same email twice in our table. And password is self-explanatory. So these two fields are going to be used as our credential fields. If you look at my live example, I'm using email and password. Now the role field, you only need one field to identify all of the user groups for your application. So if you have an admin level, manager level, supervisor, employee, staff, the list can go on and on, but again you just need a single field and you're going to use that field text255 to identify what level each one of them is going to be. And I'm going to show you in just a second here on how that looks when we go to the data sheet mode. I also have a field called status which is a boolean checkbox yes or no and all this field does is allows the managers or the admins to have more privileges to control 
who are going to be the active employees and who are going to be inactive employees. So if I don't want an employee to log into the application anymore, a manager can simply uncheck that box and this employee is no longer going to be an active employee, meaning they're not going to be able to log into the application. Now when I switch over to data sheet mode, I have some sample employees here so you can see in my data sheet mode what that actually looks like in the table level. So we have three users so far. We have Kelly with the role admin with an active status. I have John who's the manager role and also active status and then we have Tom who is just a staff employee and we have an active status. Okay. Once you have some sample users listed in your table, the next step is to jump down to views and we have to use the views to filter out our active admins, to filter out active employees and to filter out all of the active users. Okay, we need to set up three views for this specific scenario. Okay, so let's set up our first view. We're simply going to call this filter active admin from our staff table. Okay, once again the staff table is coming from this object here and I'm filtering active admin. So then on the next screen, in order for me to filter active admins, I have to go to the criteria tab and I have to include these field elements in order to filter active admin. So I need to include my field element here in the canvas screen and I want to look at my role field and I want to make sure that my role field equals to admin. But I'm filtering active admin so I need to have one more field in here and we're looking at the status field that it's checked. So both of these conditions are true if role equal admin and if status equals is checked this view is now only going to show me Kelly. Okay, let's repeat the same process for our managers which is set up identically, almost the same exact way as the admin. So we're going to set up a new view here and say filter active managers from the staff table. And in the criteria tab, again, same exact setup. Role field equal to manager. And that the status is checked. And if you did that correctly, now you're going to be able to see just John. And finally, we want to have a view that's going to filter everyone who is active. Okay? And this view is going to be used to filter all of the active employees. And you're going to see in a couple of minutes how we're going to be applying that or why that view that filters all of the employees is so essential to creating that single sign-on. Okay? So we set up a new view here and I just want to filter all active. Okay, so criteria tab. And the only thing we're interested in here is just to have the status field so it's all checked. So when you hit finish, this view is only going to show me all of the active employees from our table. So these are all employees. Even though it's an admin level, manager and staff, they're all considered employees in our organization. Okay, So that view filters everyone. The next step is to go down to authentications and in the authentications object this is where we want to have our three login screens created. Okay, We want a login screen for the admin, we want a login screen for the managers and of course we want a login screen that filters everyone. Okay, So new authentication and we want to select, let's begin with active admin which is the view that we just created so we'll select that first custom recommended and we're gonna use email and password now notice my email and password says username for label for my email I always like to rename that so it says email it's a little bit more clear and scroll down a little bit and expand this section called advanced settings so here we need to make a few modifications and a couple of modifications that we want to have is logout destination, timeout redirection, and you want to enable cross app login. Okay, so enable that checkbox and then grab the URL 
where you want the user to go to once they click on the logout link. Now usually you will probably have them going back to the login screen. So if I click logout, it takes me back to the login screen. And I have my URL set up right over here. And we're going to just change that really quickly by adding a new page like this. And then timeout and redirection, same thing. And that's all you have to do. Once you set this up for filtering active admin authentication, let's call this admin A for authentication. Let's repeat the same process for our managers. Really quickly here, so we'll say filter active managers, custom, recommended, expand the advanced settings, and drop in the same logout URL, or login URL in this case. Hit create, and we'll call this manager A for authentication. And last but not least, we have all authentication. So let's build one more based on that last view, custom, recommended. And once again, we want to use email and password and expand the advanced settings and just drop in the URL where we want the users to go to. And hit create. And we'll call this all A for authentication. All right, once you get to this step, we now have the table with the role field to identify who is who. We have our views that filter out admins from managers from all staff. And we have our three authentications. The next step is to go up to data pages. And we can begin by building that login screen. So same as my live example here, let's build the login screen first. To do that, click on the new data page link. Click on the HTML object and select your HTML page. On the next screen, make sure you're enabling advanced options and enable parameters. Let's give this data page a name. We'll call it login screen. And you want to restrict access based on all authentication because that authentication basically filters all active employees. Okay, so make sure you select all authentication. And on the very next screen, let's go ahead and disable the HTML editor for now. And this is where you want to input your JavaScript in order to redirect the users based on their user role. If you go back to our knowledge base article that we have, and if you scroll down a little bit, we have this script for you available. You can just copy it, paste that in here. And this is a little bit of an outdated um, script that was used for an older method. Uh, we just have to retype a few things in order to get it working properly. So for example, if authentication field admin, in this case we have the role field, so we want to remove that in between the quotes, and we want to insert the role field as a string. So if role equals to admin, provide the URL where you want the user to go to once they've logged in. I have my URL where I want the admins to go when they log in. I want them to be redirected to this specific URL. Okay, when you're building your own website, you might have a directory of HTML files and you want to point to that URL where you want the user to go to once they've logged in. I also have the URL for my managers, so we're going to go ahead and replace this link with the destination for the managers, but I also need to replace this field here for auth field. I want that also to be based on the role field, and I want that to equal to manager. And for everyone else, if they're a staff level employee, we want them to go to this URL. All right, so I have a folder for my admin, I have a folder for manager, and everyone else who is not an admin or a manager, I want them to go to this staff directory where I'm going to have a, a other set of data pages created for staff. Okay, so when you're done, just go ahead and click on finish. And here is my login screen. I'm going to go ahead and deploy this and grab my deploy code and simply paste that code into my script. So here's my login page. If I paste my code, 
and save my changes and refresh my page you will now be able to see that login screen that allows the users to be redirected and if I log in as Kelly notice that I'm being taken to my admin interface and that's basically just a URL that's pointing to my admin URL which is this one here okay and this is the page where I have the set of navigation menu links for my admin if I log in as the manager I will be going to this URL and if I log in as the employee I will be going to this URL. Now just to show you one more thing before I uh, wrap up today's video you know what you want to do is create folders for each one of your user groups so you might have a folder for an admin group you will have a folder for your manager group and then you'll have a folder for staff shared data pages because sometimes you'll have a data page that needs to be accessed by the staff members by the managers and by the employees and you don't want to have to duplicate your work by creating a data page in each folder this is why we have a shared folder and I'll give you one really good example of why you would use a shared folder inside this folder I'm gonna build another data page that just welcomes the user once they log in let's take a look and see how that works let's build a new data page here and once again I'll use my HTML data page and here we'll just say welcome screen enable advanced options enable parameters and make sure you restrict access based on all authentication once again because everyone should have access to this data page because all this data page is going to do is say welcome comma and then we're going to insert the user's name as a string and that's all this data page is going to do so when you hit finish and if I were to deploy this data page now and embed it in my web pages let's go to this page paste my code let's come here paste my code and also for the admin Now let's take a look and see how this works on our website. So if I refresh this, I'm logged in as Kelly, it's going to say welcome Kelly Smith. If I log out, and if I log in as John, it should say welcome John. Okay, That's the idea behind it. So that data page is shared amongst all three user groups. That's why you want to build a view that filters all of your employees from that staff table. Okay, And based on our authentication and based on that script it's basically looking in the table to see if it's an admin and if it's an admin redirect the user to that URL if it's a manager redirect them to that URL else anybody else who's not an admin or not a manager take them to the other URL for our staff level employee so let's log in as Tom as the last user here and we should be able to see welcome Tom Smith Okay, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, and please don't forget to subscribe or like the video if you liked it. And if you end up having any questions, feel free to contact us directly. Somebody from Caspio will be more than happy to assist you. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.